Do you ever think about a future in politics yeah. for you? I know that Laura, they were like really wanting her to run down North Carolina. She's from North Carolina. Have you ever thought about getting into politics? You guys seem to have the fortitude. You know, you are obviously experienced with it. I can't imagine anything could be a curveball after what you've gone through. <laughs> Nothing would be a curveball. For me, probably not. Never rule anything out, but probably not. Um, Laura was doing amazing. I mean, in all the polls, and she made the decision not to go for Senate in North Carolina, but there were Politico polls where she was at 61% in an eight-way race. And, you know, I, I mean, I think she would have walked into that seat. I really do. And, um, you know, there's a lot of different factors to that. First of all, we've seen the game, and the game isn't all that much fun, right? Mm -hmm. It's rewarding because you can accomplish great things. Um, but again, the weaponization of the systems, right? Well, again, I mentioned the Washington Post story, right? Within 12 minutes, they were already trying to impeach my father. Like, that's the system. The system doesn't give the person who actually run, wants to run for politics, you know, for great reason. My father put aside billions of dollars, mm. billions and billions of dollars for this effort. He was the first candidate ever to fund his own campaigns, right? The toll it had on us as a family was probably very different than many others. We're the first family that probably came out of Washington exponentially worse than when we got in, right? It's amazing because we just turned down a lot of things during that period of time. By the way, don't cry for us, right? You look at Obama, he goes in there as a civil servant. Now he's buying houses in Martha's Vineyard for $30 million, right? I mean, it's really interesting how that works. You know, the system doesn't reward people that want to go in that are incredibly competent to do a great job. That's the system rewards true. crooks who literally, you know, nurse off of the American people for their entire lives, never accomplish anything. The system rewards those people. And so do I want to do it? I don't know. I'm a real estate guy. I'm a bricks and mortars guy. Um, I love this country. I love red, white, and blue. I'll fight like hell for this country. Um, if my father decides to do it again in 2024, you better believe I will be the first person to stand by his side and, you know, and go to war. Um, I still do that every single day right now um, as we get attacked. But whether or not I want to step into that arena, I don't know. Time will tell. But it's, uh, we've seen a really amazing world. A lot of it's not the greatest world, um, but we've seen a very, very interesting world, and I think it's taught us a tremendous amount. I hope you're enjoying this conversation with Eric Trump. We'll get back to it in just a moment, but first, let's talk about inflation. 40 years ago, Ronald Reagan saw massive inflation unlike anything the country had ever seen before, until today. In Reagan's own words, quote, inflation is as violent as a mugger, as frightening as an armed robber, and as deadly as a hitman. Right now, your retirement accounts are under attack thanks to the inflationary policies of this administration. If you have not yet called Birch Gold, then you are missing the boat. Actually, you're treading in deep water without a life vest. Birch Gold is your life vest. Let them help you convert an IRA or 401k into a tax-sheltered IRA in gold. With thousands of satisfied customers and an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau, you can trust Birch Gold to protect your savings. Text Candace to 989898 to get a free info kit on gold. Reagan knew the biggest threat to our wealth, even 40 years later. Protect your savings now. Text Candace to 989898 to get your free info kit today. So let me ask you um, a question, because so basically it would be a natural process if it, if it came. You're not saying no, you're not saying never. Um, but what I want to ask you about, though, when we talk about these crooks and the establishment, this is something that has always confused me. I do not understand your family's support of the RNC. Like, and, and I ask this question because I think a lot of conservatives have this question because, you know, there are obviously good people in the RNC, but I don't know that they have been supportive of you or, or whether or not they have just earned money after the fact. You know what I mean? I don't know that the RNC is seen as conservatives. Is that a part of the establishment? Is, it, is the RNC very different from the DNC? Like, what, are, what is your perspective on that? I think there's a lot of good people in the RNC. Um, I think in the political spectrum, there's always somebody who's trying to, you know, milk off of others, right? No. I think the fact that my father wears the R, it means that anybody who's affiliated with R is going to try and extract anything they possibly can mm -hmm. out of that person. I think that's natural, is it nice? Um, hey, there's a bunch of senators out there who, you know, aren't great. Um, who campaign off my father every single day, even though they know that my father doesn't like him, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you could name all of the ones that I'm thinking about right now, right? They won't be supportive, they won't do this and that, but when it's time to actually go out there and campaign, they know my father has, you know, 98% of the Republican base or whatever it may be, and they'll go try and raise money off of his name. And, you know, welcome to Washington, D.C., right? That yeah. is Washington. Uh, there are a lot of good people 
um, at the RNC, that much I can say. Um, are there probably rhinos over there? Yeah, I'm sure there are plenty of rhinos associated with it as well. Uh, did they do some really good things, um, have a great ground game and other things that would be very, very hard for a campaign to set up, especially a campaign where we didn't know what the hell we were doing. I mean, we didn't know what an Iowa caucus was. I joke about this all the time, but I remember going to Iowa caucuses and I look at this little campaign staffer and I go, like, what are we doing here? Well, sir, you're gonna give a speech in front of 5,000 people in a you know, gymnasium and tell them why you know, your father is better than they are. And I go, who's they? And well, Jeb Bush is gonna speak right next to you and Ted Cruz is gonna, and I'm saying there, it's like these people know something about the world of politics. I know nothing about the world of politics, right? And so we weren't, we didn't have the capacity to create ground game. We didn't have the capacity to, you know? And so um, I think they had a very big role. Thanks for joining me on this segment of Candace. If you liked this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel and ring the bell to get notifications on new videos. To watch or listen to the full show, become a member at dailywire.com slash subscribe.